Sports Matters TV, bringing the sports home. Welcome to Sports Matters TV. We're joined by uh, a WWE NXT UK star, Mr. Sam Grau. Well, uh, Sam, first of all, how's things with you, sir? All good? How's it going, mate? Yeah, I'm all good. How are you? Yeah, I'm very good. Uh, things are good in Cork at the moment. Um, obviously, strange circumstances for us all, but uh, we'll get there, no doubt. Absolutely. I mean, th this is the new normal. That this is the new normal now, isn't it? Oh, it is. It is. It's crazy times. I mean, at least, at least we still have WWE on our screens. You know, that's that's, that's the main thing. I could not agree more. Ab absolutely. <laughs> now, Sam, we have to take it back. We have to rewind. Uh, tell us, where did your love for wrestling come first? There. Well, so my granddad used to tape films for me when I was little. And he taped a film called The Land Before Time for me, which is, for those of you who don't know, it's a heartwarming tale about, uh, about some young dinosaurs. And do you, remember, do you remember back in the day when you'd tape something on VHS? And when it finished, it'd flick over to whatever had been taped on the tape prior. Yeah. So I finished watching Land Before Time, and all of a sudden, it flicked over to Kane making his entrance. And on, and I was just absolutely blown away. I just, I just couldn't believe this big, red, massive man who was making fire happen everywhere. And it just absolutely, it just absolutely captivated me. And the next week, and the next week, I think I just said to my granddad, like, can you just take that instead? Like, can you just, can you just bring me that? And he started instead of instead of cartoons, he started bringing me tapes of WWE, and that was me, that was me hooked. And like from there, it's, it's, it's been all up and up. Obviously, we've seen, um, you know, so many big UK stars. Um, obviously, the British Bulldog, he's a guy that pretty much, you know, put the UK on the map. Obviously, Dynamite Kid. Um, Absolutely. When did you first get into a, a wrestling school or, I suppose, you know, a, a place where you could, you could you, you know, you could learn the ropes? So, the, the first thing I did was go on Google. And I live in, I live in Blackpool. Yeah. So, I, I Googled um, just professional wrestling training Blackpool and the first thing that came up was a man who I'm not going to give his name uh, but I gave him a call and he was he's a bit of a notorious con man and he said I'll train you for five thousand pounds but 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 don't worry um I make I make that per match so as soon when, when you've been trained by me you'll be making that back in no time <laughs> And luckily, uh, luckily, I wasn't fooled. Uh, I, I, I decided not to part with five thousand pounds to be trained by this man I've never heard of. Uh, so I, I broadened the Google search, and I eventually found a Grand Pro Wrestling Training School in Manchester. Um, so as soon as I was old enough, so I was around sixteen, um, I started getting the train up to Manchester every Sunday, yeah. and I just, I just never looked back. It was just, it was just the best thing. It was just the best thing I'd ever done. Um, and every time I thought I'd learnt it all, every time I thought I'd cracked it, there was something new and something new and something new. And then the first time I stepped through through a curtain and wrestled in front of a crowd, it was just like it's, it, there's just nothing in the world like it. Yeah. And tell us about that first match, Sam. Obviously, you know it's you've had so many matches under the belt, like you know wrestlers go twenty four seven. But tell us about that first match. Was there jitters? Was there nerves? Do you know what? There was actually a point where, so I was stood behind the curtain and my opponent made their entrance first. And when he stepped through the, he, when he stepped through the curtain to make his entrance, there was a very, very fleeting thought through my mind that said, there's still time to run. <laughs> there's, still, there's, still, there's still time to leave. Luckily, I didn't. And I, I went out there and... I, I don't remember. I don't remember much. It's, it's all. It's such a blur. Yeah. It's it's crazy. I remember walking through the curtain, and I remember walking back. But actually, the match is a real, real blur. But when I, when I came to the back, um, my trainers were there waiting for me, and some of the guys that I trained with, and they, they gave me a round of applause and told me I did really well. Um, that sort of calmed my nerves and made me think, oh, do you know what? I, I, I can do this again. I can do this a second time. 
No better man. And like the rest is history. Obviously, we've seen you on our, uh, our screens, WWE, NXT. We've seen some big rivalries with Mr. Pete Dunne. Um, tell us, what yeah. was it like to, to battle uh, Mr. Dunne in uh, the UK Championship? Obviously, he, he took that little dream away, but obviously, there's, there's plenty of more years ahead. Yeah. I, I, absolutely. I mean, I, I've, known, so I, I've known Pete Dunne a long time. So I, I, I was really, really happy to be in that spot with him. And uh, it was, so I did a, I did a tour of China um, a few years ago in 2000, I think it was 2015. Yeah. And there was an absolutely, just a star, there was just an absolute cast of stars that were on this random tour. Um, so there was me, Zach Gibson, Pete Dunn, CJ Banks, and there was um, Jack Gallagher's wife, um, Tim Wiley. And obviously, uh, Pete. Obviously, Pete Dunn. And we so we kind of lived together for six weeks throughout one summer. Uh, we trained together every day. We were trying to navigate Chinese food, trying to uh, <laughs> you know, <laughs> trying to uh, trying to trying to eat food that was somewhat edible and palpable. And I'd I'd had a WWE tryout at this time, and I was in regular contact with WWE coaches and Pete hadn't heard anything from them and I know and I just it, it, it didn't it didn't bother him but he, he was kind of he, he was in a kind of phase of his career where he was kind of like what am I doing wrong you know how am I going to get noticed and just to see him a couple of years on in that spot that he was in absolutely stealing the show uh, the UK tournament was was just absolutely incredible so I, I just couldn't be happier for Pete because I, I was one of those people that saw how talented he was, you know, b before the world started to catch on. Yeah, no, he's an incredible guy. And we, we were actually at the launch of the NXT UK Performance Centre. We met Triple H. We didn't know what was happening. We flew in that morning. Oh, OK. The, the lads were telling us, look, there's going to be people there, but they can, you know, just, just hold on. We were all on a bus. Triple H was there, obviously, Finn Balor. You were all there. Like, you know, it was incredible. What's it like to, to have such a big facility in the UK? Obviously, it's a big thing as well. It's absolutely immense. And just just like you, the first time we went there, we didn't know what we were walking into. Yeah. Like, so we, we got told it was a, you know, a, a UK training facility. And when you hear UK training facility, you've seen what the performance center is like. You are not expecting to, you're not expecting to see that. So <laughs> when we walked in, we're kind of like, oh, look at this. You know, it was, it was just incredible. And, the, the way I look at it, uh, the way the way I look at it is, I, I'm I'm getting paid to to go to an Oxford, Cambridge, Harvard combined pro wrestling university. There, like if if WWE were charging people to get what we get, they'd make a fortune. That you know, they'd make a fortune from it. Yeah. So you know, my my job is to go and learn from Shawn Michaels, William Regal, Triple H. Uh, Robbie Brookside, James Mason, Johnny Moss, um, Sean Hayes, the strength and conditioning coach. We've just got an absolutely, yeah, we've got an absolutely world class training facility and some even more world class coaches. So it's just, it's like wrestling wonderland when you walk in there. It is. And I, I, I'll, I'll never forget that day as well. I, as I said, Triple H was just in front of me. I'm just, holy, holy shit. This is unreal. It's, the, the first time you meet him, it's crazy, isn't it? Yeah, it's mad. He, 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 he doesn't look real. <laughs> no, he <laughs> just, just really doesn't. He doesn't look like he doesn't look like a real human. No, not at all. He's he's an incredible guy. And I, I'm gonna say, Sam, like you obviously we're seeing you on the TV a lot. Um, what, what's the future hold for you? Obviously, I want to see you win a UK uh, WWE Championship. You know, is is that something that we can see? Obviously, there's a we see Walter prowling around with that belt. Yeah, I think you should take it from him at some stage. Oh, I absolutely agree. I'll I'll happily take it off the of fat Wally. <laughs> you know what I mean? He's a. Uh, so I, I I got in, so I, I got injured twelve months ago um, yeah. and had surgery. So I've been I've been rehabbing rehabbing the knee um, like absolute crazy. Uh, sometimes it feels like um, just spot a bad look after spot a bad look. Yeah. And just I, I was getting ready to. So the the day before I was scheduled to fly out to the performance center in Orlando. Um, I was going to wrestle on WrestleMania Access, and I was also going to do a set of NXT UK tapings at uh, Full Sail. Yeah. Um, the day before 
we were due to fly. We were actually at Zach Gibson's wedding and we got a text saying all flights to the US have now been cancelled due to COVID-19. Yeah. Um, all plans have kind of been put on hold again. Uh, but once once the world resumes turning, I'm absolutely looking to get back in the mix. Um, I've said before, no better place to come back than the top, right? Of course. You might as, you, you might as well aim for Walter. He's the champ. Even Balor, you might take Balor along the way. Like you know, Balor might just be a little, uh, you know, a little, a little warm up for you until until you get to Walter. You know, <laughs> <laughs> that's, and that's another dream match for sure. Another dream match for sure. Definitely. No, we can't wait. As you said, we we've been following you for a long time. You're an incredible guy, incredible wrestler. I loved your matches with Pete Dunne. Obviously, your your tag team matches were fantastic. Fantastic as well. I must say, I've always liked you in tag team action. Thank you, thank you. Do, do you know, I, I actually wrestled Jordan Devlin in Ireland. Yeah. On a WWE, yeah. on a WWE live event, I wrestled him at the yeah. Three Arena. I, he was actually um, two years ago. Uh, Facebook reminded me a couple of days ago. Yeah. Uh, I so I, 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 I do, I do love, I do love Ireland. I'd love to come back. Definitely, and as I said, it's it's the takeover. Hopefully, I think the takeover is rescheduled for later in the year. Hopefully, we'll see you yes. at the NXT Dublin takeover. That'll be awesome. I certainly hope so. That would be awesome. Listen, we're going to make sure we're plugging you as always. We're going to keep an eye on you and hopefully we'll see that, that strap around your waist uh, in the near future. Hopefully it's sooner though, rather than later. I hope so too. Thank you very much, mate. Anytime, Sam. I appreciate it, bud. Thanks a million.